When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours, and you are mine. Your grace abounds in deep. everyone and welcome to our evening reflection on this the 9th of January 2022 and a happy new year to you if I've not seen you um, either online or in person since the new year then a happy new year um, to you. Now it's good that we're back with our evening reflections. Uh, the aim of these evening reflections really is to um, equip us for uh, the week to come uh, to help us to think uh, and to focus upon the Lord, uh, and to focus, of course, upon his word, uh, and to spend some time 
uh, praising God together and praying uh, to you. So I hope these are helpful um, to you. Now, as this is the beginning of a new year, we will be thinking uh, a wee bit about um, what can we do as, as Christians to, to encourage our, our own faith? A lot of people at this time of year make New Year resolutions, uh, but what kind of things can we do to encourage our own uh, spiritual life? And uh, to that end, we'll be thinking of a wee passage uh, from Luke's Gospel. But let's begin uh, together tonight, and we're going to sing uh, a song of praise now. Let's just join together in prayer. Let's pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for these Sunday evenings when we've been able to come together and to prepare ourselves for the week to come, uh, to focus upon eternal things and to remember that you are the Lord over all, that you are the one who is worthy of all praise and thanksgiving. And Father, as we come tonight, perhaps we're burdened down, perhaps we are struggling in our own way, but however we come, Lord God, uh, we pray that you would minister with, to us and that we would know of your presence and we would know the empowering and the presence of your Holy Spirit. So Father, go before us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, our reading tonight comes from Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 5. Uh, and we're going to read from verses 12 through to 16. Uh, just a very short passage, and really, I really do want to just focus on uh, one of the verses just towards the end. So Luke 5 uh, and verse 12. Well, Jesus was in one of the towns. A man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, don't let anyone, uh, don't tell anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest 
and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet the news about him spread all the more, so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their illnesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Amen. God will bless his reading from his holy word. Now at this time of year in magazines and in newspapers and online in the news, uh, we often see the phrase, New Year, New You. That's often what we hear, isn't it? Uh, because people make New Year's resolutions. They tend to want to improve their life. Uh, they want to lose weight. They want to uh, get fitter. And they want to think through. Your New Year's a good time to think through uh, what our priorities um, might be. Now, often these um, New Year resolutions can be very focused upon uh, the physical, physical appearance. Uh, for example, improving your uh, health, especially after uh, the indulgences of Christmas. But something that's never really um, spoken about or never really focused upon is uh, the spiritual. And it's really important for us as Christians, perhaps, at this time of year, I think it's a good time of year to do it, uh, to focus upon our spiritual life. What's going to improve uh, our spiritual uh, life? Because if we're honest, then quite often our relationship with God can be lukewarm. We can be um, realize that in our spiritual life that, that we were closer to God or, you know, um, uh, stronger or faith uh, maybe five years ago or ten years ago than we are uh, now. And so what, what's going to help us as we come to a new year? What's going to help us in terms of uh, our spiritual life and uh, our Christian faith? Well, the thing I really want to focus on in this passage this evening is the last verse there, where it's, Luke says, But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Now, the thing I want you to notice about that is, is first of all, this is Jesus. Jesus that withdraws to lonely places and prays. Now, Jesus is the very Son of God. He, he's the last person that you would think would actually need to withdraw and spend time praying. And yet, that is a priority for him. And that's what he spends time uh, doing. And if Jesus does that, then how much more do we, as frail human beings, need to withdraw and to spend time in the presence of God. Now, the other thing I want you to notice here is, this isn't just a one-off thing. It's, it's often, you know, um, you'll have heard sermons on it, I'm sure, about how, you know, before big decisions that he made, Jesus would offer, would, would withdraw and, and pray. Uh, so, for example, just before um, he chose the 12 disciples, he spent time on a mountainside uh, praying. But what I want you to notice here is, that Luke says Jesus often withdrew. This wasn't just a, a one-off thing. It wasn't just when he had big decisions to make. He often withdrew uh, to pray. And it's important for us too that we often withdraw and we pray. Sometimes we can be guilty as Christians of only praying when, when things are going really badly and we really need to seek after God or we've got a big decision to make. We really need to seek after God. Whereas actually we need that regular communion with God each and every day to spend time in his presence. The other thing I want you to notice from this passage is Jesus was busy. He was busy. Sometimes an excuse for not spending time with God or forgetting about having a quiet time or a devotional time is, you know, life is busy. I'm busy at my work. I've got you know, busy times with my, my family. You know, I've got lots going on in my life. Jesus had lots going on here. This is Jesus healing a man with, with leprosy. Uh, but we see that crowds of people came to hear Jesus. Crowds of people came to be healed of their illnesses. Jesus was busy. There were people around him all the time. And because there were so many people around him, Jesus recognised that he needed to spend time with his Father, time seeking after God. And I would suggest to you, if you're finding yourself too busy for a quiet time, for a devotional time, to spend time each day 
reading your Bible and praying, then you've got your priorities wrong. Because actually, the busier you are, the more, you know, more it's important to spend time uh, with the Lord. And you need to carve out that time uh, to spend time with him uh, so that your um, spiritual life will will flourish. Now, just as we finish this wee devotional for um, today, uh, how do we how do we do this? Okay, it's really important. Jesus withdrew to lonely places. He he prayed. Uh, how do we do it as as Christians? Well, I would encourage you, you know, do it every day, every day. Spend some time with the Lord. If you really want to grow in your spiritual life, then we need to spend time with God each and every day. Sometimes we wonder, you know, why do I not know the closeness of God? Why does God never speak to me? Well, it's because we don't spend time with Jesus. We need to do that each and every day. Now, we've got to recognize that when we spend time in God's word, when we spend time in prayer, you know, sometimes it's amazing. You know, sometimes we'll have real times where we know the closeness of God. There'll be other times when it's a bit of a grind. It's a bit of a struggle. You know, God doesn't seem to be saying too much uh, to us. But I would encourage you, persevere. Keep going. Keep cultivating that relationship with Jesus. And let's not just do it out of a sense of duty. I've got to read my daily readings each day. You know, remember when you're coming before God, you're speaking to God. You're cultivating that relationship uh, with him. So I would encourage you, do it every, every day. Use notes. Use Bible notes. There's great notes from Explore or Scripture Union. Um, there's uh, some great devotional, 365 devotional uh, books that you can get. I'm currently using one um, by Alistair Begg uh, from Truth Truth for Life. Uh, so I would encourage you, uh, have some notes to help you uh, with your daily uh, Bible readings. Uh, and I would encourage you in terms of prayer, you know, write down your prayers. Uh, get just a, a notebook, a diary, whatever it might be. Uh, write down your prayers uh, so that you can look back and say, Lord, you really answered that prayer. And be specific in your prayers uh, and what you're, you're praying for. So I would encourage you tonight, if Jesus needed to withdraw and to pray and to spend time with the Father, then we too need to withdraw and to pray and to spend time in, in God's word, uh, to spend time with our Heavenly Father and cultivating that relationship uh, with him. And my prayer for you is that during this new year, 2022, that you will really grow in your spiritual life. New year, new you, but not just in terms of the physical appearance, but as to where your soul is trusting in Jesus. Okay. Uh, we're just going to uh, pray once more and then we will sing our final song uh, together. Let's pray. A loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word to us this evening and we thank you for the way that Jesus uh, withdrew and he spent time alone praying to you, Heavenly Father. Lord God, we need that in our lives and so sometimes life is so busy, we recognise life is busy. Uh, so many demands are, are placed upon us. But the most important thing we can ever do is to spend time in your presence, to spend time sitting at your feet. And we pray, Lord God, that you would give us the courage to, to carve out that time regularly each day, to spend time in your word, to spend time praying, to spend time seeking after you. So, Lord God, speak to us tonight, we pray, and encourage our hearts. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So a big thank you for joining us uh, for our evening reflection. Please do remember that we have our prayer meetings uh, each uh, week on a Tuesday morning at half past nine and then a Wednesday evening at seven o'clock. These are on Zoom. Um, so please do join us. That's the most important meetings that we have in the church is meeting together uh, in prayer and seeking the Lord uh, together. Please do come uh, if you're able. Um, Sunday mornings, we are continuing with our service half past ten. It's in the church. We're at one metre distancing uh, presently, but we're also streaming our services online. Uh, family at four is a wee bit more tricky because it's a wee bit more interactive, so we didn't hold it 
um, today. I'm not quite sure what's happening next week, but have a look on the website, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and you'll find the news um, there. So again, big thank you for joining us this evening. Let's join together in a time of worship now. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. And you are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every Stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. Oh, wait. 